I came across this interesting paper from Microsoft Research. This has been released on 20th June. The paper title is Textbooks are all you need. And what are they introducing over here? They are introducing Py1, which is a new large language model for code. What is its speciality? It is quite small, significantly small in size when compared to competing models. Okay. It is a transformer based model with just 1.3 billion parameters and it has been trained for four days on eight a hundreds using a selection of textbook quality data from the web, six billion tokens and synthetically generated textbooks and exercises with GPT 3.5, 1 billion tokens to so totally 7 billion tokens of training data. Okay. So what is special about this 1.3 billion parameter model? Okay, so what they say over here is that when compared to models of much higher sizes, okay, like say uh, your codex 12 billion, which is 12 billion parameters, or wizard coder 16 billion parameters, right? This gives comparatively very good performance. Wizard coder 16 billion parameters on a data set size of 1 trillion tokens on this human eval. Pass one accuracy, it gives 57.3, whereas phi one with say 7 billion tokens for training and a model size of 1.3 billion parameters is giving 50.6 percentage. Okay. And on this other benchmark MBPP, it is in fact better than wizard coder over here. Okay. So this smaller model is achieving performance comparable to models of much more higher scale, right? So how did they achieve this? Okay. So what they are saying over here is that they could achieve this because they used high quality data for training. Okay. So what they are saying over here is that you have these general data for say code generation, right? Standard sources for code or text uh, uh, data for code generation, such as the stack. Okay which contains source codes from repository with permissive licenses and other web-based data sets like Stack Overflow and Code Contest. These sources are not optimal for teaching the model how to reason and plan algorithmically. Okay. So what they are saying is that current corpuses which are available, right, they cover a large broad range of topics and use cases. But based on manual inspection, what they are saying is there are several drawbacks for you know learning the basics of coding they suffer um, there are uh, these snippets code snippets have some drawbacks like many samples are not self-contained meaning they depend on other modules or files that are external to the snippet making them hard to understand without additional context typical examples do not involve any meaningful computation but rather consists of trivial or boilerplate code such as defining constants setting parameters or configuring gui elements samples that do contain algorithmic logic are often buried inside complex or poorly documented functions making them difficult to follow or learn from the examples are skewed towards certain topics or use cases resulting in an unbalanced distribution of coding concepts and skills across the data set. It is, you can imagine how frustrating and inefficient for a human to learn from such data sets, to learn coding, right? To acquire coding skills, because they would have to deal with a lot of noise, ambiguity and incompleteness in the data. So they hypothesize that these issues also affect the performance of a language model, thereby reducing the quality and quantity of the signal that maps natural language to code. This is where they are saying that language models would benefit from a training set that has the same qualities as what a human would perceive as a good textbook. So this is where the title comes from. Textbook is all you need. Okay. Textbooks are all you need. Okay. So basically it should be clear, self-contained, instructive and balanced. Okay. So they address this challenge directly and show that by intentionally selecting and generating high quality data. We can achieve state of art results on code generation tasks with a much smaller model and less compute than existing approaches. So they rely on three da main data sets, a filtered code language data set, which is a subset of the stack and um, stack overflow obtained by using a language model classifier, 
about 6 billion tokens, a synthetic textbook data set consisting of less than 1 billion tokens of GPT 3.5 generated Python textbook, a small synthetic exercise data set consisting of 180 million tokens of Python exercise and solutions. Okay. Taken together, this comes close to 7 billion tokens. So they refer to the combination of filtered code language and synthetic textbook as code textbook and use it in the pre-training phase to obtain phi one base. Okay. It achieves already a competitive human level performance of 29%. Then they use the remaining 180 million tokens to fine tune it and that they call as phi one Okay. And this is showing much better performance of say 50% on human level. Okay. So that is the key thing over here, how this data set was created and what is this textbook quality data set. Okay. That is one huge insight from this particular paper and the insight that if you have good quality data, even smaller models can give you comparable performance to larger models. Okay. So for our filtering of existing core data set, what they used is a transformer based classifier. So they took data from the stack and stack overflow, some 100k samples and they used GPT-4 to classify, um, you know, uh, to get a quality of the code, whether to determine whether it is educational value for a student whose, loan, uh, whose goal is to learn basic coding concepts. So here is an example. So given this kind of a code, these two code, GPT-4 will classify some of the code as high educational value and some of the things low educational value. It will not classify, but it will tell, right? Then what they did was on that annotated data set, they trained a random forest classifier that predicts the quality of a file sample using its output embedding from a pre-trained code gen model as features. So then they used this to actually collect data of high quality. Okay. They use this classifier to collect data of high quality from the stack and the stack overflow. Okay. So this is close to 6 billion tokens, right? So that is what is explained over here. Uh, the next is creation of synthetic textbook quality data set. Okay. So one of the main challenges in creating high quality data set for code generation is examples should be diverse and non-repetitive. Okay. So basically the examples should vary in their level of difficulty, complexity and style. So diverse, one, only when your data set is diverse, then the language model can learn different ways of expressing and solving problems in code. It reduces the risk of overfit, uh, overfitting or memorizing specific patterns or solutions and increases the generalization and robustness of the model to unseen or novel tasks. Okay. So here they have, uh, this data set consists of 1 billion tokens of GPT 3.5 generated Python textbooks synthesized to produce high quality source of natural language heavy text interleaved with relevant code snippets. We further target the content of these textbooks to cover topics that promote reasoning and basic algorithm skills. Diversity is obtained by providing constraints on topics and target audience of the generated textbook. So here is an example of a synthetic generated textbook text. Okay. They use GPT 3.5 for this. So this is another 1 billion tokens of text. Okay. Then they also generated synthetic exercises. Okay. The code exercise data set. Okay. The goal of this data set is to align the model to perform function complete tasks based on natural language instruction. This data set was also generated by GPT 3.5 where the main means of eliciting diversity is by constraining the function names. Okay. They conducted explicit decontamination and alternate evaluations in the following to ensure that these problems uh, similar to human eval benchmark are not seen during fine tuning. Okay. So this is the example of a synthetically generated exercise, right? So they created this code exercise data set for fine tuning. So this was about data. So the model architecture is actually a transformer based uh, architecture. Okay. Uh, decoder only transformer basically VSP plus 17 model using flash attention. So the architecture consists of, of the 1.3 billion parameter 51 model consists of 24 layers, hidden dimensions of 2048, MLP uh, inner dimension of 8192 and 32 attention heads of dimension 64 each. 
The smaller 350 million parameter pi 1 small consists of 20 layers of hidden dimension of 1024, inner dimension of 4096 and 16 attention layers of 64 this thing. So they use rotary position embedding with rotary dimension 32. Uh, they use same tokenizer. Uh, uh, they have adapted from another paper over here. Okay. What they say is that apart from flan, uh, do not use the newer fill in the middle or something uh, that could further boost performance and efficiency. Okay. So for both pre-training and fine tuning, they concatenate respective data sets into a single dimensional array with end of text token used for separating the files. Okay. Ne basically next pre token prediction loss is what they are using for pre-training. Okay, once pre-training is done, pre-training was done on the code textbook data set. Okay, and fine-tuning was to obtain 5.1 base, right? And then they used 5.1 base to actually basically 5.1 is obtained by fine-tuning 5.1 base on the code exercises data set. That's the idea over here. Okay. Then if you see what they are saying is that this 5.1 uh, which has been obtained from fine-tuning, the model uh, also exhibits a substantial improvement in executing tasks that are not featured in the fine tuning data set. Okay. This includes managing intricate algorithm tasks and using external libraries. This suggests that the fine tuning process might have helped the model in reorganizing and consolidating the knowledge acquired during pre-training, even if such knowledge is not explicitly present in the code exercises data set. Okay. That is one key insight over here that fine tuning improves even out of uh, what you call um, unseen data, uh, basically unseen uh, uh, data uh, uh, tasks, which are not seen in the fine tuning data set, even that on that it improves basically. So this is what they talk about over here and uh, then they talk about fine tuning improves the use of um, a model's ability to external libraries improves the model's understanding. Okay. And then they talk about, uh, you know, given a particular prompt, how phi1 improves over phi1 base and phi1 small. Okay. That's what they are saying over here. Another uh, interesting thing was this. I'll come to that. Uh, where they talk about, you know, a particular use of external libraries over here, like say, use write a pi game. Okay, there is a ball. This is the prompt. Now, uh, say we start with the pi game that asks the model to generate code to move a ball. So basically, that's the prompt. Okay, so shows that uh, the main loop of a simple pi game program that bounces a ball on the screen. That is this code snippet, and phi one correctly applies the pi game functions to update and draw the ball as instructed by the prompt. Pi1 base and Pi1 small also produce Pi game functions, but they don't work properly. They are syntactically correct, but semantically not irrelevant. Okay. So, uh, Pi1 uh, is basically because it is fine tuned. Uh, Pi1 small after fine tuning understands the logic, but does not have enough capacity for the correct function calls. Whereas, Pi, uh, Pi1 small basically, Pi1 gives you better results. Okay. Another example of another uh, take uh, tkinter uh, library. Again, what they say over here is this: write a tkinter application. This is the prompt. There is a text field on top. Or a submit button at the but uh, at the bottom. I think should be under recover button next to it. Okay. So when pressing the submit button, get the text. So this is what needs to be developed. Here also they say that phi one. Uh, both phi1 base and phi1 small fail to use the correct tinker APIs, but phi1 implements the correct functions properly. Okay, they have some additional examples of PyTorch and PyPlot also. Okay. So, if I go to the conclusions over here, what this paper says is that, you know, by crafting textbook quality data, we are able to train a model that surpasses almost all open source model on coding benchmarks, despite being 10x smaller in model size and 100x smaller in data set size. So they hypothesize that such high quality data dramatically improves the learning efficiency of language models for code as they provide clear self-contained instructive and balanced examples of coding concepts and skills. Okay. But there are some limitations over here. 
So this is like, if you have high quality data, even smaller models can give you very good results. That is a kind of conclusion and insight. Okay. So, but they are saying that there are some limitations. It is only specialized in Python coding. Okay. Which restricts its versatility compared to multi-language models. It also lacks domain specific knowledge of larger models such as programming with specific APIs or using less common packages. Okay. Uh, due to the structured nato, uh, nature of the data set and lack of diversity in terms of language and style, it is less robust to stylistic variations or errors in the prompt. Okay, stylistic variations or error, it degrades basically. Performance substantially degrades when the gra grammatical mistakes in the prompt. So this is, uh, you know, uh, this is a very good insight that uh, how can you create high quality data set? Okay. It is not, uh, uh, it is not a trivial task. There are several challenges which needs to be addressed. One is like, uh, you need to ensure that the data se uh, set covers all the relevant content and concepts that one wants to the model to learn. And it also should be in a balanced and representative way. Another challenge is to ensure that data set should be truly diverse, non repetitive. Okay. So that, that the model does not overfit to the data or memorize specific patterns or solutions. Okay. So this requires finding ways to inject randomness and creativity in the data generation process while maintaining the quality and coherence of the examples. Okay. And we also need to have a good methodology to measure the evaluate the amount of diversity and redundancy in the data. Okay. So finally, as large language models will themselves be used for to curate data, it further increases the urgency on the ethical and social implications of training such models such as accountability, transparency and the bias of the data and the models that are involved in the process. So I like this particular paper. It's one more paper in recent time, which is which says that if you have high quality data, you don't need huge large language models smaller large uh, smaller language models also will perform on an equivalent scale compared to larger language models if the quality of data is very good again narrowing the domain on which this model is trained is also will help in improving the results so i'll be putting a link to this particular paper in the description of the video you can read over it I don't know if this model is going to be released any point in future, whether they will release the code, um, whether they will release this model. I'm not sure of it, but it will be interesting to check out if this model is released. I hope this video is useful for you. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. See you in another video.